Hello, this is Mesh from Downtime Distractions with a first look review of Jibs. Or its full name is Glutinous Idiotic Bloody Zombies. So, with all our first look reviews, please check the description below for specific detail on the difference between our full reviews versus our first look reviews. So, what is Jibs? Well, it's an arcade zombie shooter. So, you're fighting overwhelming amounts of zombies and other monsters summoned by an evil wizard in the early 1900s London. So this is developed and published by Torrent. So previous titles from Torrent have been a whole series of Flash games. I'll link to those below if you want to check out some of the, their previous titles that they've released. But this is their first title onto Steam. So this is coming out to early access on the 21st of May at a price of 4 dollars US. It has single player, local co-op and also co-op with friends over Steam and it has full controller support. So the reason the devs have said this is going to early access is the usual reasons. They just want that feedback from the community to help get things fixed, changed and added which will help make the game better on its official release. So they've advised it's going to be in early access for at least a few months. They're hoping to get it out before the end of 2016 but this may change if there are complications. They've also stated there's two more bosses to come and a work being done on the online co-op and the price may go up on release so once again be warned if you want to get it get in early so the story with this game there isn't really one that follows along at the moment that you can see there's no cutscenes there's no little snippets of information on the steam page just mentions there's an evil wizard that summoned a bunch of monsters that you need to destroy so the gameplay you wander around in the overworld map and every now and again you get a random encounter. So there's standard encounters that you'll experience for the most part. will just be a herd of zombies. So you're in that encounter you'll also get uh, possibly new weapons so you can smash a crate get some weapons. You might also get a super weapon which you can use one time in that encounter. You can also pick up health and coins. So the encounters get more intense and difficult as you beat each boss. Currently there's four bosses and every boss fight is a little bit different, a little bit different mechanic each boss. So as you defeat each one, you'll start progressing to new areas and you'll encounter more powerful zombies within the zombie herds. Um, things like there's a wolf man, there's um, these tr kind of tree stumps which ooze goo, Inter pretty interesting characters there. So you may also come across mini games. They appear randomly whilst you're progressing along. And they're, they're pretty strange. Um, they add a bit of variation to the game. So there's things like zombie surfing, uh, Gatling gun defense, treasure digging, or mayhem. So whilst you're progressing, you do pick up coins, as I mentioned before. So coins can be spent on perks. So there's things like increased weapon effectiveness for ranged weapons and melee weapons, movement speed and health and stuff like that. Also, when you pick up your first weapon, you unlock a stash at your, I guess there's a church which you start in and there's a stash in there which you can, every time you pick up a weapon it'll it'll appear in that stash from then forward. There's also a little bit of character customization um, in the initial part, you can choose uh, I guess different colors, hair, stuff like that and also in game zombies do drop uh, hats and eyewear so you can get a fancy hat and some goggles, stuff like that they do have a little bit of stats on them as well Okay, so let's have a look at the options menu and see what we've got in there. Then we'll have a brief look at the UI and the perk system and just a, I'll show you a bit of how you actually interact in the world here. Okay, so this is the settings menu. So we've got some generic stuff up here about your crosshair and your aim lines and colors for co-op, a bit of co-op stuff. Uh, show the ping on the HUD, which you would do of course. A um, bit of vibration for the gamepad and the display options. Not a lot in here, but with the visual aesthetic of this game, you're not going to be able to do a lot more. Um, I think this is probably an acceptable amount just because of the style of the game. So you've got aspect ratio, resolution, display mode, a couple of different things there, windowed, full screen window and full screen, anti-aliasing. So not bad, but I mean, it is limited, but it's due to the graphic style. So audio, pretty good actually, quite a lot of sliders for separate things, so you've got master, the music, general and your UI, it's nice to have those options there. And controllers, everything seems to be rebindable, quite nice, and also you can actually rebind the game controller buttons as well, which is very nice. Okay, let's jump in and I'll just show you the UI and I guess the basics of how to actually play it. 
So these, this is the weapon stash that you unlock. Um, once you get the first weapon you find, you pick it up, then you'll unlock this area. And as you go along, you obviously unlock the weapons. So every time you can go along and select which one you want to use. So we'll take that spike club this time. And I quite like the shotgun. Take that shotgun. So what we have on the screen here, uh, top left, obviously your hearts. So how much health you have. Below that is your currency. Below that is, I guess, little buffs which you can purchase from the priest over here. So the one on the left is a repellent. So if you want to walk in the map and not be attacked by zombie encounters, you turn on the repellent and you can have a better, I guess, a rupees from the zombies. And also next to that is the chain gun, which is which I've paid for so I can get more mini games about that. And the same for the um, spade. It's all about finding the mini games. So I'll just show you the perks. What we have here is a way of unlocking them by credit and also by the zone you're in. So you won't be able to just pay credit and unlock everything. You'll need to progress through the bosses and the zones. But there's a good variation a variation of stuff in here. Things from, I guess, weapon damage to we weapon reload to penetration through zombies to health to more crates, more coins. Uh, speed, you know, melee, melee damage, and the mini games on the right there, which are the same, so they unlock per zone. The other thing as well, which I guess I'm not overly interested in, but it is here if you're interested. So once you've finished all those perks, you start unlocking the stat buffing. For me, this is not something I want to do, as I don't really think it's going to be that fun to spend that much time in it. I mean, that, that's 500 credits. And you can unlock one. So you're going to spend a lot of time to actually unlock all this stuff. And it's just, you know, slow little additions, you know, increased damage with the melee weapons by 0.5%. Total is going to be 10%. For me, that's not worth not worth spending the time in here. I mean, if there was more perks in here or if they started going crazy, like, um, I don't know, you could do crazy stuff in here, but it's, it's not really. It's quite mundane, unfortunately. But it is there if you're a completionist and you want to keep playing with friends. You've unlocked your perks, they haven't, so you can still add more power to you. And you have hat buffs as well. So as I said, you pick up hats and face wear. They provide a little bit of a buff here and there. That one's pretty good, that face wear, the monocle. So money crates drop 25% more coins. That's probably one of the more powerful ones, which is quite nice. Um... But you can as well, there is a perk down the bottom for, for when you get to this point to be able to choose um, the different face and hat wear whilst having buffs on something else. So that's quite interesting if you like a particular hat, if you want that. But let me show you the combat. This is the map that you traverse and the random encounters will happen to you. So if we walk along here, hopefully we'll get a random... There we go, battle straight away. Okay, so we have the crates here. Here's a super weapon here. And what is it? So it is a super shotgun. So they're very powerful. You can really just do some damage to these guys. You know, the combat is quite fun. Ooh, a chicken. Um, the combat is fun. I definitely give them that. I feel like it's very satisfying swapping up between the weapons and the feel of the weapons, the sound. It's it's pretty good. Um, but you know, there's I guess there's more. There's a lot more things that can add. Um, but, you know, for the, for the most part, it's all right. Um, I quite like how you can do this little roll. You can roll around to escape and kind of keep moving, roll around. So it's nice and fast as well. Um, and also what's quite funny is you can do the melee and then do a jump with the weapon and really kind of chop them up. There we go. <laughs> so it's quite cool. quite like the feel of the melee as well. It's quite nice. There we go. And cleared that. So you got the health. Every now and again, pick up some health. And a whole bunch of coins. Oh, some more health. Don't need it, but anyway. So let's do one more, and then we'll wrap it up with a summary. So back into the map, and at some point we'll have another encounter. So as you can see, these are the bosses over here, so that one's destroyed. Here we go. Oh, some cool shades from that from that crate. So you get hats and... Um, oh, there's a one of the kind of the super zombies, I guess you could call it, or super monsters. Oh, there's another one in there as well. See how he's dropping the worms? So if you shoot him, he drops worms, and they wriggle inside you, which is very unpleasant. Um, not something you'd probably want to happen in real life. Um, 
Okay, so I've angered that guy, so his mask comes off, and he gets really angry and runs around. Oop, I got him anyway. Oop, what's this? Flamethrower. Nice. Here we go. Burn. So this, you know, it's there's good variation. Uh-oh. The, I need to get rid of this flamethrower because this guy... Ow, the flamethrower, it seems like it's really not ideal for this guy here is he because he jumps on top of you and you can't hit him with a flamethrower very easily another um another one is the monsters there so the worm monsters the, the worms are coming get away from them and yeah you do got to do the big jump to get them out of you there we go so let's move on to a bit of a summary and then we'll just wrap it up moving on to the summary Graphically, it's got a nice design. Um, animations are okay. It's got a, a nice design around kind of the cutout animation style, uh, mixed with just a 2D 2D style. So it's it's quite nice visually. Um, but the animations do feel a little chunky. But that might have been a deliberate deliberate thought. It is quite gory. Um, but the thing is, it's very cartoony and very light-hearted. So it's if you're squeamish, it, you probably won't care. It's not that type of gore. It you don't even really notice it, apart from just I guess a massive sea of blood at the end. But as I said, it's it's very light-hearted. So moving on to audio, music is okay. Um, nothing stands out really in the audio track, and the weapons all sound okay as well. And gameplay. So it's an interesting little title. I did enjoy my time with it. I found myself wanting to unlock more weapons and defeat the bosses. And so it did have a hook in, in that respect. Um, the combat's fun, the weapons feel okay. Uh, you know, there's a bit of variation there with the mini games and the different types of enemies, but there could be a lot more in there. And the mini games really didn't, I didn't find myself wanting to play the mini games. Um, it was more, if they're there, I'll just do them to get some more coin, but I wasn't going, oh, that was really fun. So they could maybe mix those mini games up a bit more. So for $5, it was a fun few hours. I put about four or five hours into it, and I've pretty much got to the point where I don't want to continue anymore. I've unlocked all the perks, I defeated all the bosses, and I've started on, there's a, after you do the perks, there's a little stat tree area where you can put more, I guess, more damage into certain things and more jump speed. But I don't feel that that's going to give you any more um, reason to play the game, unless you're a completionist. So being that this is early access, here's a couple of suggestions. So more variation on enemies would be good. Maybe even add obstacles within the encounters themselves. So every time you do have an encounter, it's like a, just an open slate. There's crates in there which you can destroy. But I would like to see something else in there sometimes where, you know, you can kind of maybe try and train the zombies in a certain direction to give you a bit more time. Just to, just to add that bit of variation. Also, more weapons is always good, and I also thought what would be a really good idea would be grenades, trip mines, TNT, things like that would be really good. That for me would make me, probably make me laugh a lot. If you could train a whole bunch of zombies over a couple of trip mines, that would be really comical. Uh, and a bit more melee weapons as well, I don't know why there's not a chainsaw in there. For me, a zombie game should have a chainsaw, it's like the default standard. <laughs> but yeah, so... As I said, graphically, audio, not bad. Uh, gameplay, you know, it took a fun f few hours in there. Uh, for four, for $5, you know, you get what you expect, really. Um, and if you're interested in this type of game and you've got people you want to play with online, you know, you could spend a couple hours into it. As I said, there's more coming in the future, so there should be a, more, a couple more bosses coming. And who knows where else the game will go with being an early access. So this has been Jibs, or should I say the full name, which is... Glutinous, idiotic, bloody zombies. And this has been Mesh from Downtown Restriction, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope I've given you a bit of information on this game and given you an idea if to purchase or not. And please give me some feedback below. Like, thumb up if you liked it. Thumb down if you didn't, obviously. Constructive criticism is always appreciated. And subscribe for more videos from us. And I'll see you next time.